This is the Crusader Giant here. This is where 2.0 is located. We are hanging out at Port Alosaur Station. That's where you spawn into 2.0. Second, trying to get to that control disc. That's what I want to see. Let's talk about science a little bit, and let's start with the Crusader gas giant. So Crusader is a gas giant. Immediately when people see Crusader as a gas giant, and when you arrive at the station, the first thing you're thinking is Jupiter, right? Everyone knows a gas Jupiter is a gas giant. So you see it, you're like, awesome, Jupiter. But the description actually kind of argues with the idea that this planet is like Jupiter. Here's the description. A low mass gas giant that features a breathable atmosphere at high altitudes. A low mass gas giant. What is a low mass gas giant? Uh, well, that's actually kind of a tough question. We don't have any low mass gas giants in our solar system. So this is not like Jupiter, this is not like Saturn, this isn't like Neptune, those are ice giants, this isn't like Uranus. It's, in it, it's not like anything we have in our solar system. So how do we even know this kind of thing exists, a low mass gas giant? And this is, this is actually why this is really cool, because if you had made this game 15 years ago, we wouldn't know this existed. Low mass gas giants are actually a recent discovery made out of the Kepler Space Telescope. So we've actually found low mass gas giants before. And I actually have an example. So this is an artist rendition of KOI 304 and a letter C. C. 314C. KOI 314C. This is one, one of the planets that Kepler has discovered. This is a low mass gas giant that is just slightly larger than Earth. So it's actually in the realm of a terrestrial planet. But it's not. It's actually a gas planet. And they're actually sometimes called dwarf gas giants, which I like low mass better because dwarf and giant don't belong in the same word to me. Uh, but they're low mass gas giants. They're actually pretty similar in size to a lot of terrestrial planets like I mentioned. They tend to be more inner on the orbit for Earth, so they tend to be a little closer to the Sun, rather. A little closer to the Sun, and that's actually the case here with Crusader. Crusader is a little close to uh, the Stanton star. So, low-mass gas giants are actually a thing. Breathable atmosphere at high altitudes. Hmm, that's a little tricky. We don't really know the atmospheric composition of low-mass gas giants. There's a lot of details of those we don't entirely understand. Like, how do you get a low-mass gas giant? We're actually not entirely sure yet, so that's something that's a little up in the air. So there's a little creative license that's gone on here um, for saying that it could have a breathable atmosphere. It's certainly possible in Neptune and, and Uranus, they do capture a little bit of oxygen and nitrogen in the upper parts of their atmosphere. It's not breathable because it's super cold and there's all kinds of other stuff going on that makes, makes it kind of an unhospitable place. But uh, it's certainly possible if it's warm enough, you might be able to get an atmosphere with some nitrogen and some oxygen in the upper reaches. But we all know the main reason they did that was because they wanted to make Cloud City. And <laughs> judging by the description of, uh, of the Crusader construction places, they, they clearly were trying to make Cloud City. So they did a little creative license here to come up with something like this, which is perfectly fine with me because let's face it, Cloud City was pretty awesome. So yeah, this is what they're going for with Crusader, but they found a scientific way to go about it, which is pretty cool. So they went with a low mass gas giant. So that's pretty neat. So let's uh, let's go visit Crusader. Let's launch in, let's take a look at the gas giant. Now keep in mind when you're in game, it's really hard to get a sense of scale. Um, it's not to scale. They 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 have deliberately said they're not going to make the game to scale, which makes sense. Space is ridiculous. It's ridiculously huge. There's no way to fathom it. It's really difficult to understand how big space actually is. But they've done it to enough of a scale where things do genuinely look large and imposing, which I'm really, really impressed with. And we'll get a chance to see that when we, we take a look at the uh, at, at Crusader. If 
Which this might take a few attempts with some crashes. <laughs> but I found it really neat that this this kind of game, the kind of discovery like a low mass ja gas giant, wouldn't have existed if we had made this if they had made this game uh, uh, this detailed 15 or 20 years ago. Then every single planet in the solar system would have had to have looked like something similar to what we find in our solar system for it to be realistic uh, because otherwise they'd have just been guessing. There was no knowledge of an exoplanet like that. And now we've got a lot of great exoplanets thanks to Kepler that we understand. we got super Earths, we have low mass gas giants, uh, there's rogue planets, we've got all kinds of good stuff. We'll see how we go before we crash. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll see how far we get. And if we if we don't get far enough, or people want to hear more about Crusader, the gas giant itself, then uh, we can come back after the crash and try again, because we will crash. So this is, of course, Ports Olisar. Uh, I don't remember. How, uh, we're just gonna say Olisar. I actually don't know how to say it. Uh, this is, despite the description, this is not in the actual atmosphere, which is unfortunate because the way they described the actual like station in the atmosphere where they make the Starliners and other ships sounds super damn cool, and I really hope they add that because it sounds pretty freaking awesome. There it is. No, wait for me. Wait for me. You have toilet paper next to you? What are we talking about now? <laughs> Hold on now. What's this? Admiral Nolan. Hey, man. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for the follow. All right. So there's Crusader. There's the Crusader gas giant. Uh... Obviously fairly large, but we are in orbit around a gas giant. Now keep in mind, again, low mass gas giant. So this is going to be somewhat smaller. Um, the, it's going to be not just somewhat smaller. It's going to be a lot smaller than Jupiter, actually. So even though the image that you normally uh, put into your head when you think of a gas giant is Jupiter, this is a low mass gas giant. It's going to be very, very small. Uh-oh. There we go. thought I crashed there. Just a little buggy is all. Getting to see. Is Admiral Nolan Hunover? He just Why am I not surprised? Updated. Systems green. Launch complete. Landing gear retracted. Contact. Contact. All right, let's take a look. So we're gonna point at the star here. We're gonna decouple. And we're just going to take a gander at our gas giant. Um, looks pretty standard gas giant. You can see they took a lot of notes from Jupiter, even though it's a dwarf gas giant. I would actually think it would look a little bit differently, but for stylistic cues, I can see they took a lot of notes from uh, Jupiter. It actually looks a lot like Jupiter. Gas giants have huge, thick atmospheres, lots of circulation. They have hot, cold zones uh, in their atmosphere. Because of that, there's all kinds of storms and circulations, and that gives these, all these familiar banding patterns and weather patterns that you see uh, here on Crusader, and that you're familiar with because you see them on Jupiter a lot. So this looks a lot like Jupiter. Uh, you can even see, if you look real closely here, something that looks a lot like Jupiter's red spot. Um... I already talked about this a little bit, the realism of this, I don't think 
Crusader would look a lot like Jupiter myself. It's a low mass gas giant, and I actually think it would probably have a more stable atmosphere with less circulation. Certainly there would be bands of storms like this, but it would look a little less dramatic than Jupiter. Jupiter is a pretty unique situation that probably a Lynx is in the really big gas giants. And this is not a big gas giant, this is a pretty small one. Uh, so I don't think it would have these bands, but I understand why they did this for a stylistic cue it shows everybody, yes, this is a gas giant. This is not a terrestrial planet. Look, you can see all the storms and all the atmospheric circulation. So that's probably why they went with this. And so that's totally understandable. I can totally understand that. Unfortunately, we're kind of in the shady part of it, but we're moving around it a little bit. We'll see how far we can get around it before we crash and keep looking at stuff. Let me uh, recouple, pick up a little more speed. And guys, let me know if you see anything that's kind of interesting. Did NASA, did you see where NASA identified 5,000 mile per hour winds on Jupiter? That is not surprising. I mean, Jupiter is just, I didn't see that actually, but it's not surprising. Jupiter is a pretty, uh, it's a pretty crazy place for storms, obviously. I mean, basically the entire surface is one giant, well, not one giant storm, it's just a giant network of storms. But how do storms and the breathable atmosphere go together? That's what I mean. I don't think they necessarily would. First of all, if you had storms like this, it'd be a little hard for you to build a stable platform like you see in Cloud City um, in it. Because you don't really want storms blowing your stuff around. Generally speaking, that's not something you want. <laughs> so I don't think a breathable atmosphere or a stable atmosphere where you can build spaceships and huge atmospheric storms go together very well. Uh, but again, they went with this stylistically because that makes it look like a gas giant. That gives it that classic gas giant look, even even if this isn't necessarily a classic gas giant. This is kind of a, a different case for a gas giant. You can actually kind of see the upper part of the atmosphere here. That's kind of a neat image. You guys see that? So we're just drifting around Crusader until it crashes and talking a little bit about it. Uh, if you guys ever want to see something interesting, um, so speaking of storms, Saturn on, I think it's its North Pole, it's one of the poles, has a storm that is hexagonal shapes. I mean, no one ever believes me, but Google it. It's actually in the shape of a hexagonal. It's a big hex hexagon on the top of Saturn. It's really bizarre. I kind of wish, I hope they put that into the game so somebody could go, uh, look at your storm, it's like all hexagonal, and, and that's all gamey and stuff, and they can go, actually, actually, sir, <laughs> how close can you get to the planet? I think there's an alarm that comes off, let's see. So let's steer a little closer to the planet, until the alarm sounds. So we are actually pulling into view the uh, the spot here that looks a lot like Jupiter's red spot. It's a little smaller um, than Jupiter's red spot, but this is overall a smaller body, keep in mind. It'd be nice to have some sort of range meter for celestial bodies. I kind of agree, and I think I can actually do something along those lines um, if I pull up the quantum drive. Yeah, so I can actually see the range to it. Um, what is... I'm not going to try and read that. So I do have a range. I am closing on it. If you pull up quantum, it will give you a range. Let's move a little bit closer into it. I kind of want to go to the sunnier part of it. See if we can actually get there. Power up. Your ship's all ready to fly. Good luck out there. And remember, next time you're running low, we'll take care of you. 
check the range. So we're still quite some far <laughs> distance away. Might take a while before we get to like the core of the planet, but I feel like we can actually crash into it at some point. Before we get there, it's likely going to crash. One thing you'll notice here, uh, and I'm not sure if that's me moving it or if it's actually moving, but the day-night line here is actually changed. Remember, this whole spot was actually in the sun a second ago, and now it's actually half covered up. So I don't know if the planet's rotating or if this line is actually following me. I suspect this line is following me. <laughs> That's what I suspect is happening, and the planet isn't actually rotating. Um, it's a pretty fast rotation if it was, but I, I think that's what's going on. I want to see if you can actually see the moons. You should be able to see them. But I don't actually see the moons. Let's find another one. So here is Kellen. So I feel like you should be able to see the moons. This isn't a very big gas giant. But you actually cannot see the moons. The other one is here. Okay, I can see that one. Do you guys see that? So that moon is visible. Uh, I don't remember the name of that one, but that moon is actually visible. But the other two, maybe they're too small or something? I don't know, but they're not visible. 